Everyone's talking about how great ChatGPT is and how it'll increase your productivity in Excel by X percent, but no one's talking about what it's bad at and the dangers you should watch out for. So far, I've found that using ChatGPT for Excel can be hit and miss, and often it's more miss than hit. In this tutorial, I'll show you the best uses for ChatGPT to make your Excel life easier and what you should avoid and be wary of so you don't get caught out because it can be very easy to believe that what it tells you is true. Let me show you the results I got with ChatGPT3. Beginners will probably get the most out of ChatGPT because it's good at answering simple questions. For intermediate to advanced Excel users, it becomes less useful because it struggles with complex questions. It's easy enough to ask a question. Simply type it in the box at the bottom of the ChatGPT screen. It stores your questions and answers in the pane on the left so you can refer back to them. Here I asked it to explain how the XLOOKUP function works, and it does a pretty good job, as we can see. It provides an overview of what the function does, followed by the syntax, and then an explanation of each argument. If it doesn't give you an adequate answer, you can click the Regenerate Response button to get it to try again. Now in this answer, it stops short of an example, so I asked it a follow-up question. Can you give me an example? And it gave me a fairly simple example, but there's a lot more to XLOOKUP not covered here, and without knowing what it's capable of, you wouldn't know to ask. If you have a fairly straightforward formula question, it can usually give you a solution. We get a lot of questions about if formulas like this one left in the comments on our blog, and I literally copied and pasted it into ChatGPT, and it returned the correct answer. We can see ChatGPT is great at giving you instant answers to simple questions, and this is going to save Excel beginners a lot of time, but it comes at a cost. You're not learning if you just ask ChatGPT to do the work for you. I hope my teenage sons are watching this. Therefore, I recommend you try to find a solution yourself. And then if you get an error, a better question to ask is, what's wrong with my formula? It should be doing X, Y, Z. This way, ChatGPT will not only fix the formula, it'll explain where you went wrong and what the correct solution should be. Let's take a look. Let's say you're trying to write a formula, but it's returning an error. You can simply ask it, what's wrong with the formula? Now, the first time I asked this question, it got it wrong. Here you can see it's added two extra arguments for table one and year, which simply aren't required. So I asked it to regenerate the response. If I click on the toggle here, we can see the second time it answered it correctly. Not only that, it told me what the problem was and it explained the change. Also keep in mind that it doesn't know what data you're working with. So if the formula is returning a result, but not the one you're expecting, then ChatGPT probably won't be able to help with that. If you've inherited an Excel file with a complex formula, ChatGPT is pretty good at explaining what that formula does in layman's terms. We can see here a super complex nested if formula, and it does a decent job at explaining what it's doing at a high level, but without knowing what the cells in the spreadsheet contain, it doesn't have all of the information required to give a completely detailed answer. I asked if it can simplify the formula and it said it could, and it gave me some pointers, but it avoided actually doing it. In hindsight, I should have been more explicit with my question and asked it to simplify it. And that's what I tried next. Now it gave me an answer. And if we scroll across, you can see it's not nearly as big as the original formula, but it returns the wrong result by a factor of nearly six. It also includes three pairs of parentheses that simply aren't required. So from this, we can see that its knowledge of Excel functions isn't as advanced as it appears. Well, yet, anyway. Similar to Excel formula questions, it's also okay at simple power query formula questions. For example, I asked it, how do you round to the nearest 0.5 in power query? It got confused at first and it gave me a formula containing Excel functions, just in lower case, like power query functions are written. And when I tried it in Excel, it also returned the wrong answer. So strike one there. 
I told it that round isn't a power query function and it politely apologized and then it gave me the correct answer. Of course, as a beginner, you need to know what to do with this code and while you can ask ChatGPT where to put the code, it's unlikely to give you the answer you actually need. For example, I only wanted the formula to use in a custom column, so I only need this part of it. The rest is redundant. ChatGPT did better with the Power Pivot DAX question I asked it. I found a question on our Excel forum and copied and pasted it word for word to see how ChatGPT would fare. And I'm pleased to say it did quite well and it even wrote the formula using the table and column names that were mentioned in the question. However, I suspect that like Excel and Power Query formulas, as the questions get more complex, the answers will get less reliable. ChatGPT also did quite well with the VBA question I found on our forum, which asked, how do I change this VBA code so that it sends from an Outlook template file, a .oft, rather than a blank email? Again, I copied and pasted the question and the code in, and it returned an almost identical answer to one of our experienced VBA forum moderators. So I was pretty impressed with that. However, I know it doesn't always get it right, so don't count on it being able to automate everything you do. I really want to love ChatGPT, and I do for some things, but there are some things you should never use it for. Well, at least not with the current version, which is ChatGPT3. First, don't get it to do math or check math results. It'll give you an answer and it will assure you it's correct, but unless the result is two digits or smaller, it's unlikely to get it right, and even then it mightn't. I was horrified at the math results it returned. It clearly doesn't have a calculator built into its logic, which I'd have thought is pretty simple to do. I mean, even my Google smart speaker gets the correct answers. Let's take a look. The first question is so far off, it's ridiculous. And when I questioned the answer, it doubled down. 392 is miles away. It's not even close to approximate. And this is what I mean by it being easy to believe what it's telling you because it comes across so authoritative. I gave it some easier questions, but anything that returned an answer with decimals, it got wrong. And that's not to say if your answer is whole numbers, it'll get it right. I simply wouldn't use it for math questions until it has a calculator built in. It's disappointing that Microsoft didn't prevent it from doing math for the time being. If you give it a leading question, it will follow. For example, I asked, Excel has a function called between, correct? And it agreed with me. Now, if we go and have a look in Excel and I type in equals between, you can see there is no function called between. There's ran between, it's completely different. If we go back to ChatGPT, you can see that it's given me an answer. It's even gone as far as telling me what the arguments are. And it's therefore important to phrase your questions in a neutral way to ensure that you don't get a biased result. That said, even when I started a new question that was unbiased, it still came back and told me there was a between function and laid out the syntax, which is completely fictional. Now, it may be influenced by my previous question because I'm in the same session. I'm logged in as myself, so it may remember other conversations. I'm not quite sure. But just be aware that if you ask it a leading question, you're more likely to get a biased answer. The bottom line is chat GPT is a bit like a politician. You have to fact check everything it tells you. Some of it will be right. Some of it will be embellished and some of it will be plain wrong. Look, I'm sure with each iteration of ChatGPT and other large language models, we'll see improvements on the limitations I've covered here. And let's hope improvements in math capabilities arrive soon. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Have fun with ChatGPT, but be sure to check the answers it gives you very carefully and don't use it for math. You can click the link here to see the written tutorial, which contains the screenshots of the questions and answers I covered. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching. <laughs>